Hello, and welcome to Inside Games Journalism, a video series of explanation, analysis, and discussion of how games journalism works. I'm Phil Hornshaw, freelance games journalist and deputy editor at GameFront.com. Before we can talk about any of the things I just mentioned, we need to agree on something. What games journalism actually is. After all, there are all kinds of people actively discussing, writing about, and presenting on games, and many of them approach their work very differently. There are traditional reporters working on the web and in print, critics who analyze various elements of games, reviewers whose primary job is to judge games against other games, interviewers, on-air personalities, what you might call pundits or opinionists, let's players, analysts, YouTubers, bloggers, and enthusiasts. Many of these people don't operate under the same rules, and many of them might not even consider themselves journalists. So before we can really start to analyze games journalism, we need a working definition, and getting one isn't easy. Part 1. The Confusing World of Games Journalism Plenty of games journalists are self-starters. who started their own blogs and picked up some attention, or netted jobs with larger outlets. They generally carve their niche through writing skills and not necessarily journalism skills. And people who write about games have a tendency to start out as fans, whereas other journalists purposely try to cover their subjects from a disinterested perspective. There's also the fact that there traditionally have been publications and outlets for games journalism that fall more on the public relations side of the equation than the journalism side. The easiest and probably most famous example is Nintendo Power, a magazine that was for years published by Nintendo of America itself. It's hard for writers to project an unbiased approach to games when the company that employs them actually makes money from selling those games. And whereas in newspapers and magazines, most journalists follow the same rules of conduct and ethics, you might be hard pressed to find even two outlets in games journalism that follow the same rules of coverage and ethical policies. GameFriends policies might be different from IGN's, which might be different from Destructoid's, which might in turn be different from Polygon's. Part two, what is the definition of games journalist? If we're going to be analytical and critical of games journalism, we need a set of standards that define what a games journalist is. There are roughly four standard criteria that people expect journalists to adhere to, whether in games journalism or elsewhere. Number one, the journalist reports accurate information from a disinterested perspective. The reason journalism exists at all is to gather information, and that information has to be as ironclad as possible. The general public usually just doesn't have the resources to get information about, for example, a studio's especially savage crunch time rules or a game's troubled development history. They also don't have the ability to get useful preview or review information about games they're interested in buying. So journalists are basically hired by the public to gather that information. The disinterested perspective part comes down to impartiality, because when a person has a vested interest in the thing they're reporting to the public, it's in their best interest to bend or ignore the truth. So readers expect journalists to remain impartial and report information fairly and accurately, and journalists, in turn, take steps to maintain that reputation. Number two, the journalist uses knowledge and understanding to act as a fair analyst. Not everyone has the resources to become an expert in a given field, and when a journalist reports information, they're expected to have the knowledge and context to make sense of it. You wouldn't want someone reporting on, say, a new healthcare policy without an understanding of what that might do to taxes, just as you wouldn't want someone reporting on first-person shooters who doesn't understand the influence of Doom or what Call of Duty has changed in the genre. When a reporter lacks context and knowledge, even the best intentions aren't enough to stop confusion, misinformation, and errors. And the audience expects journalists to use their information and perspective to guide analysis. Journalists are expected to provide that kind of informed perspective and to drive through the noise to what matters in any particular issue. Number three, the journalist is accountable for what he reports and is careful to be correct. Journalists have a great deal of access and power. To publish a quote and attribute it to a person is to give a factual accounting of what that person said. And if that quote is particularly hurtful or insensitive, that can have real repercussions for that person. Now imagine the quote is actually attributed to the wrong person or gets certain words or facts wrong. Now the journalist has actually harmed the reputation of that person, whether accidentally or not. That's real power, and so journalists have to have a serious commitment to and respect for getting things right. That also extends to accountability for when mistakes happen, as they inevitably do. A journalist strives to avoid errors, and when something does go wrong, the journalist corrects the mistake while also owning up to it. This is another way through which journalists have to build trust with their audience, and the audience shouldn't just expect journalists to own their errors, they should demand it. Number four, the journalist performs a service to the readership. She works on behalf of the audience. The most important part of a journalist's job 
is a dedication to working for the audience. Journalists provide information to the public that they can't get themselves in order to help make decisions. In games journalism, that usually means financial decisions, but it doesn't always. A publisher may want a game shown only in a certain light. A source may only want their side of the story told. A fan may only want to hear good things about one console and bad things about another. It's all about telling worthy, important stories to serve an audience not game publishers, game developers, or anyone else. So to recap, here's what we basically expect from someone who says they're practicing journalism. They seek out information and report it without bias. They do research to understand the context of that information and provide that perspective. They're careful to report accurate information and they're transparent about any errors. And they serve their audience, first and foremost. Part 3. So, how do you judge games journalism? Answering that question isn't as easy as it sounds, because as I mentioned, not everybody writing or talking about games considers themselves a games journalist, so it would be unfair to hold them all to the same standard. What it often boils down to is what kind of work the person in question is doing and what you've come to expect from them. Traditional outlets such as Gamefront are publications that purport to do games journalism in all its traditional forms. We publish news stories, reviews, interviews, and previews, the same as you might see in any magazine and many other websites. We expect to be held to the standards of journalism. It's really up to readers and viewers to judge games journalists, first by recognizing those who claim to be traditional journalists and those who don't. It can sometimes be tough to make that call, especially when adding in smaller outlets, PR outlets, YouTubers, and bloggers into the mix. But the only people who can accurately make the judgment of whether an outlet is fair and truthful are its readers. It's up to readers and viewers like you to stay informed in what kind of work the outlets you favor do and what kind of work it actually is. That's the only way you can seek out good games journalism or other kinds of content like opinions, and it's the only way to hold games journalists accountable for their work. And on that note, this has been Inside Games Journalism. If you have a topic you want discussed or a question you want answered, please drop it in the comments. I answer just about all of them, and I intend to do more of these videos. And if you like what you're seeing here, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, because that helps me keep this up. I'm Phil Hornshaw, see you next time.